Hi everyone, it's Jerry. This is a basic review of the Halloween Gambit, an opening that we can see out of the King Pond game. And once all knights are developed towards the center, once we're in the four knights opening, an opening that we can quite commonly see against an opponent who likes to copy our moves, we have on move four knight takes e5, this here denoting the Halloween Gambit. Black, after it's captured, well, what has just happened? White has given up a knight in exchange for a single central black pawn and also a little bit more. As is the case with nearly every gambit, you get a lead in development. White gets just that with now d4 that has uh, white has built to center and is doing so with gain of time with an attack on an already developed black piece, the knight on e5. Now, How scary really is this for black? Well that remains to be seen. When I was reviewing for this video I've noticed that there are many lines where if black is greedy and wanting to hang on to the material that was just won, things can end uh, very badly for black. And I believe that uh, when you do enter those sorts of lines where you're hanging on to the material as black, you need to know your stuff. Um, and if you are the side who happens to be uh, more knowledgeable about this opening, I think things can turn out well for you. Now that is one approach to hang on to the material that was just won. But the other is to simply give some of it back in exchange for getting some development of your own. And uh, those resulting positions may very well not just to be equal, but maybe even preferable for black. We're going to have a look at both frames of mind. One where you're greedy and one where you give some material back. Now from here, after d4, uh, the knight has a couple options. There's c6 or g6. Knight g4 you can forget about. White will get that material right back. So we'll have a look at first knight g6, where the knights are now together. What now follows is e5. White continues to advance in the center and, and do so with tempo. Knight g8 is the only safe square, and now the name of the game is development. Get your pieces out, pinpoint the weakest point in the black position, and have ideas of converging on f7 with even more pieces. Now this is one approach for black to give some material back with d5. And you'll note that this is done so that black can get their queen bishop out and black does not want to give white time to develop any new pieces hitting now a piece on c4 a piece that's already developed after bishop takes pawn there's c6 this is i'm not saying the best variation for black but i just want to show a way that they can get their king safe get development in with now uh, being a single move away from developing uh, this is uh, black is doing just fine um, that is one approach by black to play this d5 move. But what if your opponent doesn't have that frame of mind and instead says, you know what, I want to challenge the one pawn that's in my territory with, say, d6 or f6. Um, here's how white could be treating both moves. With d6, there could be queen to f3. And what to do about f7? Well, there's queen d7. White can now get more development in. And if black is really going to be capturing here, they could really end up in a world of hurt. Very uh, Things can end very poorly for black. Notice how all of white's pieces are working. White is, in fact, down a full piece. It's not just a knight for a pawn uh, at this point right here. Black is up a full knight at this point, but has a lot of work to do. If knight e7, well, now we can take on e7. We can also look to win the queen. If c6 to block, knight e4 would hurt black very badly. So knight c6, and now there's rook takes e. Black could give up their queen, and at the end of it, white could be getting this bishop back with this uh, little tactic on uh, the king and the bishop. Uh, this is one approach for white should this d6 move be played, how you can be uh, developing your pieces. Um, instead of d6, there's also f6. White could simply ignore this, and this ends very badly for black. After these captures, if the knight is grabbing here, we give this check. Yet again, making use of this h5 square with the queen, pinpointing the king, and this time the knight. Knight g6, and now we give a check. The knight blocks, now we have queen f3, we're looking for mate. d6 is going to result in a mate in 3. With bishop check, bishop check, followed by mate. Um, and there's really not a good solution, unfortunately, or unfortunately for black at this point. If d5, we're simply taking that pawn. 
with queen d6. We're going to give check with the bishop this time and then pin the queen and soon win the king. Um, these are just some quick lines that I wanted to show you. Um, the main thing that I'm seeing that is wrong with these two moves, d6 and f6, are what? What do they have in common? Well, they are not uh, developing, right? Well, d6 you could say is developing, um, but they are not posing any threat to white. You notice the main difference between d6 and d5. d6 challenges the e5 pawn, but it's not throwing a, uh, a strike at white, and white is able to fire right back with queen f3 as a response. f6 does nothing to facilitate the development. In fact, you could say that it's just hampering the ability for black to get their king to safety since it's exposing uh, the, the, this diagonal, right? White has control over g8. There's not going to be any kingside castling anytime soon. So those are just a, a few quick lines. With knight g6, there's also knight c6. And after d5, if you were to ask me, what do you do if your opponent plays the Halloween Gambit against you? Well, this is the line that I would choose. After my opponent plays d5, I would give the material back. The variation that I'm about to show is one that I really like for black. Bishop b4. Give the knight back, and now you take on e4. Queen d4 at first glance looks good, attacking two pieces, but there's a convenient reply that also throws a punch at white looking for a discovered attack against the white king. And after bishop e3, we can take on c3 and simply drop back to d6. This is perfectly fine for black. Black is uh, the preferred side from this variation. After takes, takes two sets of perfectly healthy black pawns and a single move away from completing development, black is doing better here. Notice how queen takes on g7 is crushed with bishop to e5. Big problems for team white. So that's uh, this would be my recommendation, I guess you could say, um, for how to give some material back and uh, just simply develop with bishop to b4, pinning the knight to the king. But black is greedy. Black wants to hang on to the material. And now comes f4. Hitting the knight yet again, we have now three pawns in the mix. White lunges forward yet again, attacking the knight on f6, and similar to how black replied to the threat on the knight when it was on c6, black can reply the same way when the pawn is moving up to this e5 square to attack the knight. Same move. Bishop to b4, pinning the knight to the king, giving the material back in exchange for, yet again, development. Queen, knight, bishop all out, c3 is hit a couple times, f4 is hit a couple times, and the main thing, black is just a moment away from getting their king safe. This is another approach to give the material back, but black doesn't want to. They like having the material. Knight g8 has to run back home, that's the only safe square. If you're going to want to play this position with the material that you just won, you want to hang on to it. d6 now follows. What's the intention behind this? It's to control c7 as well as e7 and one day look to get this knight into the c7 square and land a fork. Well, black needs to break up this pawn chain and notice that when they do, the e-file has now been peeled open. And this is very, a very, very important detail because black now must make a queen move. Doing something natural is hit with queen e2 and all of a sudden you have to interpose on e7 with the piece white is getting the material back. So what's needed by black at this point is queen a5 or queen to f3. Queen f3 will allow a knight move to this c7 square. Um, that's not to say queen or queen to f6, that's not to say that that's a bad move, um, but let's first look at queen to a5 where that interferes with this idea of bringing the knight to the b5 square. What white can do is develop the bishop, with the idea of queen to e2, setting up some discovered attacks against the queen. What's maybe best for black is to make a king move right here. It's not the most common, commonly seen move, I wouldn't think, if you're not booked up as uh, playing on the black side. What's most natural is probably knight f6. And what could now follow is queen e2. If king d8, 
simply castled. These are a few quick ways that you can be getting your pieces mobilized with this rook now here to defend d6. He remains a thorn in the black position and completely cramps the whole king side as well as the queen side. It's very difficult for black to complete their development. This is not the only reply. There is also queen h5. The queens can actually come off and still in this position there are some difficulties for black. Um, namely this point right here. After capturing on a7 it's important for black to give some material back with rook takes bishop. If something like knight here to watch over the c7 square things are going to end very badly for black. With bishop check king here the knight is watching c6 right or c7 right not so fast rook e1 the knight is pinned this knight's going to jump in here and black is in a world of hurt if rook takes pawn here's a nice little mate take here with double check take here double check and that's game over so black needs to certainly be very cautious in these lines here where when the queen is developed to a5 and you have the bishop developed to e3 this idea of getting the knight to b5 converging on a7 maybe even looking to jump into c7 black needs to be very careful um, the other line is or the other queen move is queen to f6 and maybe the best line for black to be going with what can now follow is yet again knight to b5 and here is the uh, the very common threat, the, the most uh, direct threat, right? Knight c7 landing a fork. Well, black can say, you know what? Uh, I'm going to allow you to uh, fork the king and rook. I'm going to take on f4. And if you go forward with capturing my rook, I'm going to remind you that your king is also a little bit vulnerable. You'll notice that black's king is a lot more safe than the white king and moves like this you have a bishop knight and queen surrounding the king and not long off this bishop on c8 who's been contributing not at all is close to be uh, entering the scene uh, by way of this h3 square if something like queen to d2 trying to kick the knight away uh, white is reminded that their rook on h1 is vulnerable and there are moves like uh, this queen to e4 rook g1 you could be capturing uh, a couple times on this e2 square knight takes e2 these sorts of things are available uh, excuse me these sorts of things are available to black um, so this is just a, a quick or I, I said brief at the beginning of this video this is, these are just some uh, brief lines that I'm showing you here uh, some of them where black is uh, giving the material back others where they're trying to hang on to it. Some turn out to be good, some turn out to be bad. You really do need to be booked up. And uh, as a close to this video, I'd like to just show you uh, one game between two uh, fairly high-level players, uh, namely Grigor Minchev versus Alexander Petrov. And uh, things turn out quite well for Team White in this particular game. We first start out with the Petrov and Halloween Gambit on move four right there. And we have this line where knight c6, and you'll notice in this game black is not giving the material back. And we have these pawns advancing, a pawn established on that d6 square, and queen f6 to follow. Knight b5, in the line I showed, it was knight takes on f4, but we did not see that reply by black. Instead it was rook b8, bishop e3 followed, putting pressure on a7, b6 as a defense, queen e2, setting up discovered attacks, the king gets out of that. White gets more development in, and look at how everything is just clogged up here on the king side, and these guys not so great either. Uh, queen F or Queen to E6 is now met with a deflection. The idea behind this was to stop Queen to C4, but White says, "You know what? Get out of there. I'm going to hit you with the fork. Allow my queen to get to C4, and then to C7. Bishop D4 hits the queen. The queen reacts by giving a check. White gets out of that." Black gets out of the threat, and this is just going to be game over after check. Black has to interpose on e7. g3 hits the queen. Queen to d2 hits the rook, but simply development of the rook and an attack against this rook. This is going to be game over for team black. The bishop gets captured, but soon enough it's the black king who gets mated. After knight takes, we have knight d6 check, king f8, and queen to d8, and that's checkmate. So... 
Uh, that's all for this video. As always, I hope you got something out of it. Take care. Bye.